Good evening, everyone. This is Professor Makayaon, and I'm making this video for all of you on January 25th, 2021. First and foremost, I hope that everybody is doing well and safe out there. And I know, friends, that this is the beginning of your semesters. Uh, what is this? Uh, is it week three? I think this is week three that we're in now. And so in any case, um, what I do want to do is just put some um, some uh, clarifications to certain inquiries that have come down the line. And um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to answer some questions about core. Um, the first question is, how much is each case worth? Um, each case is worth two hours, two hours. We're assuming as faculty that you're taking about one hour to read the lesson and successfully uh, pass the quiz and then another hour to do the case, okay? And we're just talking about one case. So if in a given week you have two cases, then that's four hours, but you've got to make sure that you um, submit them into core separately. So each case is a two hour submission. Now, what about debriefing? Well, debriefing hasn't happened just yet for the majority, but when you go into debriefing, it will be a two hour session and uh, that's exactly what you're going to submit, two hours. Now, um, you'll be doing debriefing three times in the semester, and hopefully um, we can uh, accommodate all the schedules and availabilities that you guys have with our own schedules as faculty. Now, due dates of the cases. Uh, guys, I have to apologize to everybody here. When we put the cases up, the quizzes and the cases for this week, it automatically defaulted to... Um, to the 28th, which was a Thursday. And so um, I did get some emails and basically um, we moved th those due, due dates to Saturday at Saturday, 11.59. Um, now friends, um, I just have to let you know, what does it mean, okay, when you submit it on Saturday, 11.59? Uh, it means that the cases have to be thoroughly completed and submitted by Saturday, 11.59. What does it mean by thoroughly completed? It means um, that not only did you pass the scenario, but you also passed because your performance addressed the urgent priority needs. Uh, it reflected safe nursing practice and it was patient centered. Okay, now friends, there are a number of things that we're identifying that um, some students aren't doing. And guys, this is pretty basic. I know you're just getting acclimated uh, to the software, but let me just show you what we're looking for, okay? And remember what I said in orientation. I know some of you haven't gone to the orientation. I did put out the link so that you guys could watch it. And I really would advocate that by watching these orientations, it would save you guys a lot of headache. But here it is, okay? And so allow me to show you. Um, let me share this um, with you. And we're just going to go straight into the software, if you may. And so you see this. I'm going to open up Mr. Quarles. But there have been some instances where we have lost information because of certain things that have happened. And you know what? Um, it's not any, um, I would say it's not a glitch in the software. Rather, uh, some of us have been opening up the lessons, right, the lessons, and opening up the cases, but there was one little nuance that we did not consider, okay? So let me just show you. When I open up care of the patients with stroke, when I click this, notice it opens up a separate tab up here, okay? Now, here's the deal. When I go to settings, right, when I go to settings, right, open lessons in a new tab is on, but some of you might not have it on, and so what happens is this. Um, let me just look at the settings one more time. It's off now. And so check it out. When I open this up right here, check it out. What it does is it opens up into this window. So what's happening at times, and I've seen this already happen with num numerous of our numerous students of ours, um, they would first open Mr. Quarles, right? And so didn't open up a tab just yet, right? Let's say this tab wasn't there. And so they went through the scenario, they washed their hands, right? They, what do you call it, uh, gowned up, they masked up, they gloved up, right? They went to the patient, checked his ID, 
They verified. Okay, guys, NBA name, name, date of birth, right? NBA, right? Name, birth date, and allergies. So they verify patient name and date of birth, right? And then they verify allergies. Guys, that's all you have to do. NBA, name, birth date, allergies. We're great. Now we've identified the patient. And so check it out. We, what do you call it? We listened to the patient. He says, I was just sitting there. All of a sudden, my left arm felt numb. My face looked funny. Okay, great. Guys, act as if you were in the, in the room. So after that, most definitely, we're going to do our assessments. But can I just show you guys down here? The bed is not locked. And I think they purposely did that. So I go to the bed options, right? I apply the bed breaks. But because I know that I'm going to take one of these rails down, I adjust the bed rails. You're going to do it anyway, guys. You always hear me say this. But let's just say, right, that now we start doing our vital signs, right? And there it is. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. What bothers me here is 178 over 75. Okay, I've done my vital signs. I'm going to ask him about pain. I go to patient interventions right there. I go to comfort care, and I assess for pain or discomfort. Now, friends, if you've got a patient who's got pain, it will say here, your patient complains of a pain of 5 out of 10. And it'll give you characteristics, but because he's not in pain, there's nothing going on here. But here's where I want you guys to check it out. Okay, so you go through the scenario like you typically would, and you have this inkling that you want to look at um, the lesson, but you didn't open it up. Now check it out. I opened it up, and boom, it opened it up into this window inside, and not on a different tab on the side of this. Well, everything that you and I have just done is completely wiped off and is not saved. And this is why, guys, you may have gotten in trouble with losing information. So friends, can I show you the workaround to this? Before anything else, let's go to settings, right? Go to settings, open lessons in a new tab, turn that baby on. But it's not enough that you turn it on, then hit that change settings button, boom. Now you've changed the settings. Now, when I open up, right, Mr. Quarles, right, but I didn't, right, notice I start from point blank, but I didn't open up the lesson. When I hit this, it opens it up into a new tab and does not affect my information here. We okay with that? All right. Now, friends, let's say I'm giving a medication, guys, giving a medication. Well, guys, let me just show you what you need to do. Before you give the med medication, you need to tell your patient that you're going to give his, give him this medication that Dr. So-and-so, Dr. Mack, ordered Tylenol 650 milligrams PO for you. This is to address your pain of 3 out of 10. I know it's a mild headache, sir, but I got a weird feeling that this Tylenol is going to do well for you. So we're educating him. We're telling him about the medication use and possibly some side effects, right, if the medication has any blatant side effects. And so look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here to patient education, right? Go to general, right? And I'm going to tell whoever's watching my clicks, right? As I'm navigating through the room, that medication use and side effects. Okay. Now, before I give the medications, I've done this. Let me X out of that. Of course, I need to do my five rights. Now, friends, let me show you my five rights. This is how you knock it down. Okay. Some of you start off with NBA. That's fine. Verify name, birthday, and allergies. Great. That's great. But now let's start running down our rights. Right patient. Scan the patient's armband. Patient is verified. Bam. Okay. All right. Then scan medication before given. Assure that medication is verified. Verified. Boom. All right. Right patient, right drug. Let's go down. Right dose. Right here. Bam. Okay. Right route. There it is. Right time. All right. Awesome. Okay. Now, let's say, guys, you know, I'm running through this and Tylenol is not, you know, appropriate for this case, but check it out. Let me just give the Tylenol, guys. All right. So analgesics, I'll go here, acetaminophen. I'll give it um, PO. All right. Look, pain control is always good and important intervention. Click anywhere to continue. So I gave it. Now, once I gave it, guys, let's make sure we document it. Check it out. Go back to verification. Document medication administration. Bam. Congratulations. This is a good choice. And so 
This is one of the things that we're missing, guys. Please don't just click, 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 click. Guys, as simple as medication administration. Every one of you, majority of you guys are getting the disease process and how to address it, you know. Um, but guys, these simple things, let's make sure that we do. Another simple thing, before you finish the case, guys, can you just do this before you leave the patient's room? What is it that we do? All right, well, we've adjusted the rail. Let's make sure I put the rail up for their safety. If your patient is confused, confused, activate the bed alarm, okay? Um, you know what, before I leave, before I leave, I'm gonna move the call light closer. Guys, please do so, because you're gonna do it anyway. Um, I'm gonna move the table closer to him so that he can get his things, right? Before I leave as well, I'm gonna give him some patient activity instructions. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell him, hey, while I'm out, can you do me a favor? Can you do some deep breaths, exhale and hold, all right? He'll probably tell you why. Well, you know, this is gonna help you from a not getting pneumonia, okay? You don't want pneumonia, so it'll prevent pneumonia. Hopefully I said that right. Then maybe you can talk about um, some range of motion exercises while he's in bed, so you can hit that, bam, okay? You can talk about the, the need to call for help prior to exiting the bed. Okay, there you go. All right, and so let's just X out of there before I leave the room. Guys, I'm gonna wash my hands, I'm gonna gel out. Then I'll finish that case, if I'm gonna finish it. The other thing, friends, please, that I'm noticing, right? Check it out. We'll, we'll go into the room, right? We'll read the chief complaint, right? But there we are, we'll go to the patient and we'll listen to what he's doing, right? And um, you know what, that's great. Let me check your vital signs, right? Let me do a physical exam, right? Physical exam. But you know what we didn't do when we walked in the room, guys? We didn't gel in. We didn't glove up, gown up, mask up, glove up. And so guys, please don't forget that. The other thing that I'm seeing as well is friends, look, you're doing great. You're listening, to, you're reading the report, you're washing your hands, you're gloving up, you're masking up, right? You're looking at the vital signs, but you're forgetting to verify your patient. This is something that you and I do all the time. Make it reflect. Now, what am I talking about? Let me just show you a couple of click streams that may, what do you call it, give you a little light to what we're doing. And so this is desktop one. Check it out, guys. Look, here it is. You read the patient report, you washed your hands, then you put on a mask, then you did vital signs. Now, my question is this, did you verify who your patient is? For real? Is that what it is? Because I know before you even lay your hands on your patient, you're gonna be telling them who you are, which is an assumption, right? But you need to reflect on this click stream that you're verifying that your patient is who he is, name, birthday, and allergies. As simple as that, okay? Now, let me show you another thing, guys. Um, it's on here. If you just take a look at this, oh no, th this is fine over here, but look over here to the right, um, we would it call, we give a medication right here, hydro, hydralazine, uh, antihypertensive. Okay, all right, great. Number one, we got the patient report. Listen to the patient, we put our hands on the patient, examine the patient, never washed our hands. Are you kidding me? Didn't put on gloves. And so now you got COVID, all right? On top of that, right? Besides getting COVID, right? Here you are, you look at medications, you listen to family, that's great guys. Um, you look at the oxy oxygen control, you called the stroke team, right? Called the stroke team. Then you gave him medication. But look what's funny about this. You didn't do your rights. All right, you did it after the fact. Checked the patient ID band, verified name, date of birth. Where's right patient? Where's the right drug? Right route, right time? No, you did it all after the fact. No, you got to make sure you do it prior. And you also have to make sure that you educate your patient. You guys okay with that? All right, so I also want to show you guys over here. Here's another one. Um, again, patient report, never washed their hands, never verified who the patient was, okay? Now, the hand washing's down here, right? But they examine the patient over here. So, guys, be take this slow. Don't go fast. I want you to dissect everything that you do in the actual clinical setting. You're going to give medications. Look down here. 
They gave two medications, but no rights of medication administration. Guys, this is what we call, um, we call reflecting safe nursing practice, right? And so please, you know, um, I know you guys um, have a lot of things going on, but truly, if I just show you the amount of time that it takes to do this, it's not a whole lot. Really, it's not. I can just show you guys. Uh, the most that I've seen right now is an hour and 19 minutes spent in Navex. Okay. Now, friends, um, some of you may have exceeded that just a little bit, right? Some of you have might be a little bit under that or drastically under that, but nonetheless, um, for me, what's most important, listen to what I'm saying, is that you address this case safely, that you pass it, but it's not enough to say that I passed it because it said green, right? More importantly is, did you pass it, right? Addressing the urgent and priority needs. Okay, now when we say urgent priority needs, let's say your patient's short of breath, right? and you decided that you were going to teach them about um respiratory you know like instructions like um incentive spirometer guys you guys are setting at 89 percent, and you're teaching about incentive spirometer are you kidding me no you know you may be experimenting i get it but friends allow it to reflect what you would prioritize address it right and address it safely as you would in the actual patient environment. Ooh, one other thing I do want to mention, guys, before I let you guys go. I do apologize. This is a little bit long, but let me just share my screen one more time and go back here to our patient, Mr. Quarles. Okay, guys, if you're going to go into the chart, right, I don't see any computers in this room. And so the only computer I see in here, right, is this vital sign monitor, but that's not where you access the electronic health record where you will access the electronic health record is outside in the nurse's station so friends if you need to look at the ehr which we all do because if you don't you're going to be you're going to be practicing blind right you really need to look at these diagnostics these labs this medical history these demographics everything right well then friends it's out in the nurse's station so if you're exiting this room please make sure if you're planning to go to the chart and access it, make sure you wash or you gel out. Then go into the electronic health record, which is up here, right? There it is, and it'll say electronic health record. Now, friends, that room is not gonna change. I'd love it if this changed, you know, into a nurse's station, but it doesn't. All you get is a workstation on wheels. But there is that understanding that you are outside. So if you're outside and you wanna go back into the patient's room, guess what? Gel up mask up gown up glove up exactly what you would do in the actual patient environment that's all i'm asking now friends i think that's about it um i do thank you guys for for listening i do um hope that this was helpful to you and this would be helpful in your future cases um i know that um, some of you have reached out to me and i've been trying as much as i can to um return uh your uh means of communication I've been calling you guys, I've been emailing you, and um, I've been, uh, some of you have been texting, huh? Anyway, guys, I'm hoping that I can help you guys out as best as I can. And I'm also helping, hoping that this video will also help your instructors as well. Because I know that in the, these first couple of weeks, you're just getting acclimated. But please, you know, um, um, we'll try our best to, to make things um, workable for you guys, okay? That said, friends, thank you so much. Um, don't forget to pray. And of course, I know you guys are praying. And just stay safe. And may God bless you, all of us, and of course, APU. Remember, friends, God first. Thank you.